Um, perfect. So you're going to talk about security on Python with us today, isn't it? Yeah. Wonderful. So, well, whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. My name is Gajendra Deshpande, and I'm working as assistant professor in KLS Cocktail Institute of Technology, India. Today, I'll be delivering a talk on deceptive security using Python. So these are the contents which we are going to discuss today briefly. So introduction to deception, then two tools, web trap and demon hunter deception tools. Then about our ex experiment, how we developed the deception technique, then conclusion and finally the references. Imagine you are passing through an unknown street at midnight and you find that some antisocial elements are following you. To save yourself from them, you start running and look for a safe place to hide. On the way, you will find some good person and you request him to help you. So he hides you in his place to protect you. When these antisocial elements visit a good person's place and inquire about you, the good person misguides them and he directs them to some other place in order to protect you. This is exactly how deception works. In this analogy, you are the resource just to be protected. Antisocial elements are the hackers who want to gain access to the resources. And a good person is a deception technique that protects the resources from hackers by making them fall in the trap. Now let's understand the basic idea behind deception, how it works. So the definition of deception is that it's a technique where hackers methods will be used as a security mechanism that is fishing the fishers now let's assume that you have a, a legitimate website of a bank and what hackers do is they create a similar user interface which looks exactly the same but the backend is different so so when you enter your details assuming that it's a legal website but in the back end, hackers are collecting your data to carry out the further attacks. Now, deception is the military tactic used by both attackers as well as defenders. So in our case, we are using to protect our resources. Now, this diagram shows how deception works. Now, there are two users. One is the benign user and second one is the malicious user. Now, both have access to the common user interface. Now, depending on the type of user, depending on the input depending on the activity either the, they will be provided with the real system or the deceptive system so benign user if he is authorized if he is authenticated correctly then he will be given access to the real system otherwise the malicious user will be redirected to the deceptive system which looks exactly the same but it's not a real system now there are two types of deception technology. One is active deception and second one is passive deception. In active deception, what happens is inaccurate information will be provided to the hackers intentionally to fall for the trap. In passive detection, incomplete information will be provided. So intruders will try to gain the other part of the information and fall for the trap. Now they can also be classified as a client side deception and server side deception. So mostly client side deception is used by hackers to deceive the uh, legitimate users. Whereas the server side deception, it is used by the security providers to deceive the hackers. Now you can develop a better deception by combining both the approaches that is active deception and passive deception. That is you can come up with a better deception which has incomplete as well as inaccurate information. Now let's see the deception's evolution and its advantages. Now honeypots were introduced in the year 1998. So honeypots are the small traps in the network when trying to uh, access those points, they will fall for the trap. Then HoneyNet is nothing but the network of honeypots. They were introduced in the year 2000. Then Honey Token is a small piece of information which is embedded in the uh, real information when somebody steals the real information this token will give the alert to the system administrator saying that so and so message has been stolen and it gives the information about how it has been stolen the next 
Honeypot 2.0 were introduced in the year 2012, then deception technology came into existence in the year 2016. Now the advantages of deception are increased accuracy, minimal investment and future ready. So it is applicable to even uh, new technology and even the existing technology. Now, let's first discuss the web trap uh, deception tool. It is designed to create deceptive web pages to deceive and redirect attackers away from the real websites. So the deceptive web pages are generated by cloning the real websites, specifically their login pages. So this project has two files. Basically one is web cloner and second one is web server. Now what web cloner does is it clones the real websites and creates the deceptive web pages. And what deceptive web server does is it is responsible for serving the cloned web pages. Note here that it is serving cloned web pages, not the real web pages. And reporting to the syslog server upon a request. So if anybody tries to access the uh, cloned web pages, then it, it will be logged in the syslog server. Now you can install this web trap tool by following these commands. But the problem with web trap tool is presently it works only on Ubuntu 18. Now you can see here the usage is shown in this slide. So you need to make use of webcloner.py file. Then you need to specify the next parameter as the output directory. Then the website URL you want to clone. So example is shown here. So here we are cloning the Wikipedia's login page into the directory Wikipedia login page. The next uh, is the web trap that is the deceptive web server. So to use it, you need to specify file trap server.py. So to trap server.py file, you need to specify the directory name and the syslog server. So here trap server.py file is serving the login page from the Wikipedia login page folder, which has the deceptive web pages. So when somebody tries to access this folder or the files within this folder, it will be logged in the syslog server. The next tool is Daemon Hunter. So Daemon Hunter is used to create low interaction honeypot servers and it has agents and a manager to check the logs. So it allows you to create your own honey net all customized by yourself from ports to the protocol handlers. That means you can have your own port numbers, you can have your own protocols. Okay, so user different protocols are also allowed. So in this diagram you can see here centrally there is a manager component which manages everything. So that means it manages the honeypot devices, it manages protocols, and it manages port numbers. And note here that these protocols can be of different nature. So they may not be just HTTP only. So it can be combination of HTTP, UDP, SMTP, FTP, etc. Now why we developed a deception tool is we know that cyberspace is a national asset. And XML is the heart of many mainstream technologies nowadays, including web services, service center architecture, or microservices, cloud computing, etc. So web services vulnerabilities can be present in the operating system, network database, web server, application server, and so on. Now, when a new technology is introduced, it comes with its own new challenges, plus old challenges will also be present. Say, for example, when we say SQL injection, it is available or it is present with respect to relational databases. But when we use XML as an alternative to uh, relational databases, so same kind of injection attacks can be performed on XML document also. So next, the problem which we tried to solve was to secure the web resources from XPath injection attack using modular recurrent neural networks. And for that, we propose a solution that uses modular recurrent neural network architecture to identify and classify a typical behavior in user input. So once the typical user input is identified, the attacker is redirected to fake resources to protect the critical data. So in this case, we developed our own validation technique, input validation technique that is count-based validation technique. So in next few slides, I will discuss how we developed Count-based validation technique and how it works. Now, we need to first understand uh, how XPath injection attacks works. So, in this slide, you can see that there's a small XML piece of code which stores username and password, right? So, 
and at the bottom you can see that there are two lines one is in uh, blue color and second one is in uh, red color so the line which is mentioned in the blue color it actually indicates the valid query where valid username and passwords are mentioned whereas if you consider the last line which is specified in the uh, red color that's a malicious query so you can see here no real data is um, used there instead attack vector is used so you can find some boolean operators and some unwanted characters now sapec on xpath injection it clearly states that to perform xpath injection attack you really uh, don't need any skills so any beginner can perform these attacks any beginner can perform or uh, create or create an um, attack vector to perform the attacks and typical li likelihood of exploit is very high so that's why it is a very important uh, thing to handle now we studied few research papers and we we found that there are some gaps related to the existing work now what we found was neural network approach to identify and classify a typical behavior in in input was not yet done so the study showed different approaches to handle expert injection attacks it also showed methods applied and their disadvantages we can conclude from the study that neural networks are not applied to detect expert injection attacks and existing results are not promising the study showed how modularity in case of neural networks helps to achieve improved performance modular neural networks have not been applied to cyber security particularly to the detection of sql or xpath injection attacks now this slide shows the system design so it shows the end, uh, working of the entire system so you can see here there are three uh, tiers one is presentation tier business tier and the data tier presentation tier has the login form that's nothing but the user interface through which the user or the attacker interacts then we next have the business tier where the data processing or the application logic is stored the next we have the data tier where we are storing real xml document then the fake xml document and also the customer messages now if you consider some examples some uh, examples of valid inputs are email id mobile number etc then examples for malicious inputs are also mentioned then there is a third category that is some invalid inputs so that is very large input string string with special characters and etc so what happens here is when attacker uses invalid inputs it's going to generate an error message and error message also gives you some information related to the system for example which browser the uh, client is using which um, operating system the client is using etc so to avoid that you can design custom error messages which hides this system information now in this algorithm we are describing how our count based validation technique works now the first step is to scan the user input and next determine the length of the user input then count the frequency of every character so you need to count the frequency of uh, characters digits and special characters now you can see here in table 4 on the bottom right corner we have specified the character and the threshold so that means only up to the threshold the characters are allowed if it is exceeding the threshold then appropriate error codes have been assigned so if the frequency of the character is below the threshold then the value set for that particular character in table 4 then set the error code to 40 else if the frequency of characters mentioned that is the special characters is above the threshold value then set the uh, particular character threshold to 4000 now what we have done is we have modularized the neural network we have not used the single neural network because that will uh, result into a lot of uh, samples so to reduce the samples we have divided into uh, three neural networks so in the first neural network we are training it on login attempts in second neural network we are training it on uh, error codes and uh, error codes so you now to build a neural network uh, we have used recurrent neural network and with uh, 15 neurons and hidden layer as lstm network that is long short term uh, network uh, and the output layer as softmax then we had used resilient propagation trainer to train the network in a training data set and test data set is created in real time to validate against the trained data set
then if the training error is if the training error of both the networks are 0.0 percent then classify the input as uh, in table 3 so table 3 is mentioned in the next slide okay if it is classified as valid then you need to display the message as login successful and redirect to real system if it's classified as malicious then the content from a fake xml file has to be displayed otherwise invalid then custom error message has to be displayed now you can see here we are training our third neural network based on this data set so we have output of neural network one we have output of neural network two then the final classification so if one of the output is uh, malicious then it will be classified as malicious if one of them is invalid then it will be classified as invalid but the flow is from valid to invalid to malicious now we had used pybrain library for neural network then for web services we have used bottle pi micro web framework for web server we have used bottle pi and apache then similarly for drawing graphs we had used python numpy and matplotlib then pybrain is a modular machine learning library for python it is short for python based reinforcement learning artificial intelligence and neural network library so to download you can follow the url and you can follow the instructions and there is a very nice tutorial you can follow it to install pybrain and execute examples and similarly bottle is a uh, fast simple and lightweight microwave framework for python so it is distributed as a single file so it has no dependencies no need to install just include the, the file in your uh, directory and start using it so it has built-in routing templates utilities and server modules so again the information can be uh, more information can be found in the specified urls so these are the results we have got so in case of true positive you can see here we are getting more stable results with respect to modular neural network whereas results are unstable with respect to single neural network right so similarly when we compare false negatives it is the same so results are better with respect to model neural network and single neural network so same is the case with true negatives and also the false negatives now when you compare the response time here so you can see here when we use modular neural network our neural network response time is less so when we use single neural network it is taking more time so the ratio is 1 is to 1.5 now when we summarize the results we see that uh, you can see here the results of model neural networks are better compared to single neural network so that is including and excluding outlier the results of model neural networks are better in all the cases now these are the screenshots so you can see here in this slide we have a uh, fake data file and we have real data file right so you can, if you observe the structure both looks similar but the thing is uh, data in one file is fake it's not real so this is the user interface which we have created for our experiment so in the first case that is valid input scenario user will enter the right or legitimate username and password so it will be classified as valid so it gives the message login successful then similarly if user enters malicious query then note here that it is not going to deny the uh, it is not going to deny the um, uh, access instead it will uh, display the fake data and also note here that when it is displaying the fake data we are also capturing the details like uh, the server web browser right what query the attacker has used what is the port number etc etc right and also we are also capturing the login attempts then next uh, what user will do is or the attacker will do is he will try to log in with the fake credentials and this time it shows that login successful but note here that this is not the access to the real system instead it is giving access to the uh, deceptive system so conclusion is that our solution offers improved security over existing methods by misleading attackers to false resources and custom error pages our results also show that the system accepts legitimate input Although the user input may contain some special characters and rejects only truly malicious inputs. So our solution combines modular neural network and count-based validation approach to filter the malicious input. 
so it also resulted in increased average detection rate of true positives and true negatives and decreased average detection rate of false positives and false negatives the security systems have to be successful every time but attacker has to be successful only once so with reception i can only say that we can buy extra time to protect our resources but we may not be able to protect the system entirely so these are the references you can refer for more information thank you thank you